Uh, we're here talking about beautiful books. And is there anything more beautiful than an art book? Gorgeous imagery lavishly illustrated and printed on the finest papers. Expertly designed pages bound in cloth, stamped in gold. Book displays of impeccable taste in the finest stores in the world. Books so beautiful we artfully arrange them in our homes for all to see and admire. My name is Greg Albers. I'm the publisher of Whole Art Books, but I have to confess, I hate art books. Art books are expensive, which means they're not accessible. They're heavy, which means they're not mobile. And here's their dirty little secret. No one really reads them, which means they can't be social. Really, they're souvenirs and status symbols. Our reverence for them has been misplaced. But I'm not actually here to talk about art books. And in fact, I'm not here to talk about how art books might become e-books. Books, whether beautifully printed or beautifully coded, are not in themselves beautiful. Instead, books are beautiful for what they say and for the encounters they create. Encounters not only with other texts and ideas, but also with people, places, and for my field especially, objects in the real world. As we all know, one of the great successes and continuing promises of ebooks is in their mobility. Not that people can read books anywhere. After all, people can always read anywhere, including in the bath and at the beach. Rather, that people can access books anywhere. That's obvious, but I think it's worth remembering. You no longer have to go to a library or a bookstore to start reading a book. You don't have to order a book online and wait for it to be shipped to you. Books are now instantaneous, and they are everywhere. As creators and sellers of ebooks, we must start thinking more about this where. Where will our readers be when they discover our books? Where will they go to read them? Can we give them book suggestions based on their location? Can virtual bookstores exist in actual places? Can everything and every place lead us to a book and vice versa? Here is our chance to connect books and readers directly to their subjects in the real world. And the following story is my vision of that. I am an art museum visitor. Walking through crowded galleries one day, I come across a painting that I'm particularly drawn to, though I can't say exactly why. There's just something about the look of it. I stop and I glance at the label to find the name of the artist, but I don't recognize it. I look back at the painting. I stare at it. I take out my phone and I take a couple pictures and I stare some more. I copy down the name of the artist and the title on the back of my museum map. I continue to stare at it. My focus fluctuates from the whole composition down to smaller areas and even individual brush strokes. I think about what's going on in that picture. I think about how it's been painted, about the colors that were used. I wonder why I like it. I wonder what makes it important and good enough to hang in this museum. And I wonder what other people think. After a while, I look back to the label and I read its six sentences. As I read, I look back to the painting, referencing what I'm reading with what, what I see. And honestly, it doesn't, make, it doesn't all make sense to me, but still, I keep looking. It's then that I notice at the bottom of the label is a QR code inside a book icon and a short URL below it. Down here. I take out my phone and I scan it. I touch OK. In moments, the painting is in my hand. Small, yes, but there. I swipe a finger across it, and I'm inside a book. The table of contents is like the label. But here, each individual sentence leads to an essay. There's a biography of the artist, a conservator's examination of the painting, a short story from the time and place of the painting's original creation, a letter from the artist to his dealer, a poem. I take two steps back, sit on the wooden bench in the middle of the gallery and in front of the painting, and I read. Not all of the book, but some. I read and I look. 
There are passages already highlighted in the book. I mark one myself, and with this highlight, I type in the words, I love this too. I notice that the woman seated next to me is also reading on her phone. I watch as she lifts her eyes to some detail in the painting, pauses, and then goes back to read some more. She looks up again, but this time turns her head to me and, with a glance at my phone, smiles just a little. I take my book home with me. I read more on the train and later in bed. I learn about the museum library and the section it has dedicated to the artist. I find other books to read. I email the curator a question. I see that there's a book club meeting at the museum to discuss the book and the painting. And there's an online forum I can visit any time. I find myself thinking about the painting often. I am back at the museum the next weekend. I spend some time with my painting first, and then I move on to the next. Thank you. Short and sweet, so there's probably time for questions if I want, if there are any. No? All right, thank you very much.